Okay, students, now that we are on the classroom rug, we've gone over all of the lunch options, we've picked our favorites, we are going to talk about creating a bar graph out of this data. So, as is written on the board, we have our pizza lunch option, which seven of you guys chose. We have chicken nuggets, which five of you guys chose. Sandwiches, which three of you guys chose. And bringing your own lunch, which eight of you guys chose. So we're going to learn how to create a bar graph. Every bar graph starts with two axes. Can anyone tell me what that is? No? Okay, let's learn about it. The axes are the horizontal and the vertical, so the side to side and the up and down edges of the graph. So the uh, y axis on the vertical left hand side of the graph. The horizontal is the bottom of the graph. Those are your two axes. Can anyone tell me what they think our horizontal axis is going to be? What's going to go there? Do we know? Our lunch options. That's actually a really good answer. So with our graphs, we always have what we are measuring on the horizontal axis. That's what we are measuring. So today we're measuring our lunch food options. So we're going to list those on the bottom axis. And then on the vertical, it's how we're measuring them. So I want you guys to write that in your notebooks. Write that in your notes. The horizontal axis is what we are measuring. The vertical axis is how we are measuring. So we decided, write this in your notebooks, the lunch options are going to go on our horizontal. So I'll go ahead and write it on the board. We have pizza, chicken nuggets, sandwich, and bring your own lunch. Who can come up and write that on the board for me? All right, thank you. Then we have on the vertical how we're measuring. And how do we decide to measure with our data collection? We decided to measure it with how many people prefer that lunch choice. How many people, and we're going to go in increments of one, because that makes the most sense for our graph. So on the vertical axis, it'll be one through ten. Go ahead and write that in your notebooks as well. And then you want to label them. So on our horizontal, we'll label lunch options. On the, hor uh, the vertical axis, we'll label how many people prefer this option or number of students who preferred. That is how you create your axis for this graph. Remember horizontal, what we're measuring, vertical, how we're measuring. That's how you create your axis. Good job, guys. Hi, students. I am so excited that you guys were able to participate in our data collection today on what lunch food you like best. So all of our data is the amount of students in our class who likes that lunch food the best. So I see seven people like pizza the best, five people like chicken nuggets the best, three people like sandwiches the best, and eight people like to bring their own lunch. So now, sometimes we can have some trouble understanding all of that information when it's just written out on paper like that. However, it can be a lot easier when we put it into a graph. So we're going to be putting that into a bar graph today. And Miss Megan told you guys how to read the two different axes, is what we call them, on the graph. So I filled out the axes already for us. So the first one is the number of students who like that particular lunch food best. So we have the numbers going up. And I just did on each line, I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I knew eight was our highest number, so I just stopped there. And then at the bottom, we have all the different lunch food options. So pizza, chicken nuggets, sandwich, or bring your own lunch. So now I am going to put all this information on the graph. So let's start with pizza. Pizza, I know seven people liked pizza. So I'm gonna draw a bar that goes all the way up to the number seven. Hold on while I do that just a second, and you can go ahead and do that on your graph as well. Okay, I have my bar for pizza. Now I'm going to go to chicken nuggets, and five people like chicken nuggets the best. 
So I'm going to make my bar for chicken nuggets. Okay, there's my bar for chicken nuggets, and then we have three people who like sandwiches the best. So I'm going to make my bar to show three people who like sandwiches the best. And then we have the bring your own lunch team. So I'm going to make a bar that goes up to number eight for all the people who like to bring their own lunch. Okay, now here is my bar graph. Does it look similar to yours? So we've got number seven here it's for the seven people who like pizza. Number five people who like chicken nuggets. So there's a five right there. Then three people who like sandwiches, which is goes right there. And then eight people who like to bring their own lunch. Thank you guys so much for helping me make this graph. And now you're going to go over to um, Mr. Ray, and he is going to talk to you all about how you can put different numbers on the axes to make the graph look a little bit different. It'll be really interesting and fun. I hope you like it. Hello, class. My name is Mr. Scales, and today we're going to be talking on about the third stage of bar graphs, which is talking about the scales, <laughs> my last name, the scales of which you use to represent a bar graph. So by that, I mean like this number line right, this number right here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's an example of a scale, because that's the number scale right there. So obviously, you replace the um, like pizza at seven, chicken nuggets at five, sandwich at, you know, three, and bring your own lunch at eight, and then I added the mac and cheese just to give an example. Um, you would add that at the four. So that would be a good example of a scale you can use. Now a different one, which is a little more not as accurate as this one, is is if you did going by twos. So by that I mean like if you did two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And then obviously since it's, it's not as accurate because like well this one's a little more this one's like doesn't exactly say what where it's at, but you have to assume that because it's between the six and eight, oh it's seven. Um but Armani will you know, tell you how to exactly read it. I'm just saying the difference in the number scales because you have different scales. Like you can have go from two to six to twelve, or you can go by threes, um, or you can go by fours. Um, there's a lot that you can go by with the scales, but. The more, the higher you go up, the less accurate it is. Like with this one, it's very accurate. Like you obviously see, um, oh my bad. Um, you can obviously see the one, two, three, four. So you know that since pizza, they had seven kids who, there's seven of you who want pizza, it's going to go to seven. So just, um, want you guys to recognize that you can do it with different scales and that sometimes sometimes data might be better if you did it accurate like this one but sometimes it might be better if it wasn't accurate and you did it like this just to make it easier um easier for you to put it in a scale but typically we want it at uh at more accurate which is this one, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. All right, guys. So now that we have tallied all our information, we know how many students wanted what for lunch. We made our choices. We graphed our choices. Now we're going to have to answer a couple questions. So we need to learn how to read our graph. So now we are going to um, learn how to read our graph so that when we're asked questions about the information on the graph, 
will know um, how to answer it accurately. So let's get started with the questions. So we have um, three questions that we're going to answer. And then we have our graph here. So we have our labeled graph, we have our x-axis and our y-axis, and we have our information. So lunch choices here on the x-axis and the amount of students on the y-axis. So let's start with our questions. It says, how many students brought their own lunch to school? So let's look on our graph. So we have pizza, chicken nuggets, sandwiches, brought your own lunch. So the question asks, how many students brought their own lunch to school? So here we are on the x-axis, we have found brought your own lunch. So we have to go up our y-axis to see how many students brought their own lunch to school. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know that eight students brought their own lunch. So when we go to answer our question and it asks us how many students brought their own lunch, eight students. Next question, it says, which lunch choice had the least amount of students? So least means which amount of students chose, which lunch choice had the least amount? So which bar is the smallest on our graph? So we're gonna go to our graph, go to our x-axis and go to go to look at our choices and see where the smallest bar is. So right here, sandwiches is our smallest bar. So you have one, two, Three. So three students chose sandwiches for lunch, and it has the least amount out of all the choices. So when it asks which student lunch choice had the least amount of students, we say sandwiches. If it asks how many, we say three. But it just said we, ha we just have to look on the graph and see which lunch choice had the least amount. All right, so question number three. It says how many students wanted pizza or pizza or chicken nuggets for lunch. So we have to do a little bit of addition for this one. So we're gonna go back, let's pick up our graph. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at pizza and we're gonna look at chicken nuggets. So we know that seven students chose chicken nuggets or seven students chose pizza for lunch. And we know that five students chose chicken nuggets for lunch. So we have to add those two together to get our total. So seven plus five is 12. So how many students wanted pizza or chicken nuggets for lunch? 12 students. And if we have more questions, we go back. If you have the accurate amount of information, you should get the right answer every time. Okay. Hi students. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. And now is the time where we would typically be doing a video to just recap the lesson. Um, but we don't have time for this video, so we'll be doing it in next week's class period. Anyway, um, that video would be recapping both bar graphs and then also introducing picture graphs. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for listening!